name is uh, Frank Horhey. I'm the technical manager for Tarmac uh, Contracting uh, Paved Business in the South. And this is? My name's Simon Sherwood. I'm the pavement engineer for Norfolk Partnership Laboratory over in Norfolk County Council. Um, thanks, Simon. Um, so we're here to uh, have a, a discussion uh, about the use of the, our Ultilayer SAMI product uh, that was used on a, a scheme in Norfolk. Um, so Simon, um, can you give me a brief um, history of the scheme and why you used the SAMI product? We used the SAMI product down on the A140 at Skoll in Norfolk. It's a CRCP road built in the 90s, but it started to suffer from structural failures quite regularly, pop outs, things like that. So we had to do something with it. This is a typical failure mechanism on Skoll Bypass for the CRCP. The area marked out there is a failure that we were, had to deal with before anything. So this was put into our design and how we got over this reflecting through the asphalt into the upper layers. We looked at a number of ways of dealing with it from rubberization and getting the steel out and rebuilding it completely, but the costs were uncontrollable. So from that, we looked at different options and one of the options we worked with Tarmac with at the time is to look at Sammy's. And a SAMI was evolved from a number of people being involved from Tarmac and the lab here to develop the SAMI that we know today that Tarmac sell. The SAMI is a 9% uh, rich buy PMB binder. It is only 40 mil thick, but there's a lot. It's very sticky, very gooey. It was quite interesting to listen to the lorries driving over it once it was down because they were struggling to pull through there they were sticking to the surface of the road so at the time um of of design uh, you obviously looked at quite a few different um options um and so obviously what led you to uh, eventually choose choose the sami and and what else did you put on top of the sami to 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 you know to aid the performance over over its life we looked at a number of options and the problem with some of these options were the costs were uncontrollable uh, breaking up and removing the steel from the concrete, we couldn't control the cost. So we had to keep in the uh, concrete in place. So it was then looking at what to be put on top. Sammy's uh, were a good option for us, but we also put uh, modified binders over that for the binder course. We put a 50-20 with uh, PMB in. We also put our the Norfolk SMA on top of that, which is also modified. So we've got 200 mil in most places over that concrete road with a SAMI, PMB binder course and PMB surface course. Under some of the structures, we had to drop it down slightly so it's thinner in places. But again, that all seems to have worked so far. So obviously, because the underlying layer, layer was concrete, it was more about you know the, the best options of uh, crack um, provocation up yeah. through the pavement. As you can see on the screen here, is a typical cross section of actually what we built at Skull. It's identifying the SAMIs, the uh, the poly modified materials, but also the original CRCP concrete road. Beneath that, of course, was an HBM as well, support on that concrete road. So you can see a total depth of construction here. It's typical throughout the site. There's looking of ways of stopping propagation of the cracks from the, the concrete because there was a lot of cracks in there. And there was areas that were severely cracked in places and it, it was just stopping that coming through to the surface if we could get asphalt on so that we found that was the best way and we did some trials with yourselves in some laybys with different mixers tim smith from tarmac and bob noakes all uh, looked at different blends of sands and binders you know different binders so we had two or three different mixers that we tried in laybys before we actually came to the main line works so the, obviously the materials laid in 2009 or the or the whole pavement obviously itself um so what sort of monitoring and and how would you say that the material is is holding up um 13 years later so this, uh obviously we run track uh scanner along the road things like that so that that covers the data but also a number of times myself and tim smith from tarmac have walked up and down there and more recently we walked up there with someone from Highways England as well, or National Highways, to look at it, and that was literally end of last year. And there is, there's hardly any cracking on there now. At all 13 years later, which 
you've got to give it its dues. That we're quite happy with that. And we've not yeah. even got a surface treatment on it yet either. So, so, so as far as you're concerned, it's it's done the job. It, and it's, it's performing and and more. Yes, yeah. Okay. It, it's it's really it, it's shone through. I'm quite surprised that no cracking's come through. Hardly, you know. I have one area, and that's it. But everything else is, is yeah. And is that is that the surprise is because of how bad the underlying layer yes. was that you laid on? So, yes. okay, okay, that's good, that's good. All right then, Simon. Um, thank you so much for for giving that insight into um, the uh, our multi layer Sammy that was used on your site. As I say, it's great to hear that it's uh, still performing 13 years later. No, so, hopefully I can come back in 10 years' time and we can say this again and it's still performing. That'd be great. No worries. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, thanks Frank. Cheers.